Hello, today we're going to talk about reactivity 3.2.10 and 3.2.11, and it's all about reduction. So reduction of functional groups and reduction of unsaturated compounds. So let's start out by talking about the reduction of organic functional groups first, um, to particularly the carbonyl compounds. So um, this is effectively the reverse of the oxidation of alcohols that we talked about in section nine. Um, but effectively, uh, you're going to be doing reduction, which means that you are gaining hydrogens or losing oxygens each time. So if I, I can start out with a carboxylic acid, um, like I can do, uh, let's do ethanoic acid. Like this. And if I reduce it, I can remove one of those oxygens to form an aldehyde. And then if I can keep going, I can actually turn that all of the way, add hydrogens to it, and turn it all the way to a primary alcohol. I just need a um, good reducing agent and some heat for this to happen. A common one is lithium aluminum hydride. Um, this is a metal hydride, so the oxidation state on the hydrogen is negative one. And over the course of these reactions, the hydrogen then turns to a plus one oxidation state. So the hydrogen is being oxidized because its oxidation number is increasing. And the organic compound of that is being reduced. Another good thing to note in here is that the um, hydride, the hydrogen with the negative one oxidation state, is what we call a nucleophile. Um, so let's break down that word, nucleophile. The nucleus of the atom is a positive charge. And file, it means there's some kind of affinity. So the negatively charged hydrogen, the negative oxidation state there, is attracted to the positively charged nucleus, acting like a nucleophile. So that's if you start with an acid. If You, you can also start with a ketone, um, like, like this. The ketone I can only reduce um, to a secondary alcohol, like this, because of the position of that carbonyl functional group is in the middle, so your alcohol winds up being a secondary alcohol in the center of the compound there. Let's talk about the um, reduction of unsaturated compounds next. Remember that reduction can refer to gaining hydrogen or losing oxygen for organic compounds. So let's say I have something um, like a very simple alkene. This is an unsaturated compound. It is not completely filled up with hydrogen. I can reduce that, add hydrogens to it, and turn it into an alkane. Now, typically, you want to do this in some source of hydrogen um, with a nickel catalyst, which is a heterogeneous catalyst. It wants, it'll just serve as like a surface for the compound to react and make the collisions easier to happen. And we also call this hydrogenation because you're adding hydrogen to it. But you're, you're effectively turning it from an unsaturated compound into a saturated compound. You can also do this with alkynes and convert them into alkenes or alkanes. And because it's gaining hydrogens each time, that is a reduction reaction. I just want to take a second and um, relate this back to oils and fats. Um, so oils tend to be plant-based for the most part, um, but they tend to have more unsaturated fatty acids, which have double bonds. So you have those carbon-carbon double bonds. Fats tend to be more animal-based, um, and they will be more saturated. It's not 100%, but it's close. Um, what you can actually do is take an oil and turn it into a fat. 
through hydrogenation. So you might have seen on some food labels like partially hydrogenated. And so that's where they're taking some of the fatty acids with the double bonds and adding hydrogens to turn them into saturated fatty acids, um, which can help solidify it a little bit better. Because the oils are um, have these double bonds, they have um, weaker intermolecular forces. So they're more likely to be liquid at room temperature, whereas fats, which only have their single bonds, um, tend to be uh, solid at room temperature. So they have higher melting points, higher boiling points, um, stronger intermolecular forces. They're easier to stack. So the fats have stronger London dispersion forces because they, they stack better and they're less polarizable. I'm sorry, more polarizable. Now, um, one problem with this that, that popped up um, was that sometimes when you hydrogenate a double bond, you can create a trans isomer instead of a cis isomer. So um, when you have your um, your double bond here, right? If you take that double bond, you turn it back into a saturated compound. So there's no double bond anymore. If you try to go in the reverse, you can actually, instead of creating a um, cis isomer, you could create a trans isomer. That would be cis, and this would be trans. So this would be a cis unsaturated fatty acid if it had that in there. This would be a trans unsaturated fatty acid. And that's where you get the term trans fats. Um, and that was a problem because um, the body doesn't really have the enzymes adapted to be able to break down trans fatty acids, and so they were really quickly accumulating in um, veins and arteries. So um, a lot of places have banned trans fats at this point in time, um, which is a good thing. So the, the process of hydrogenating or dehydrogenating, um, it, it needs to be carefully controlled and considered when you're doing that, especially for, for food sources. Now let's um, go ahead and predict the product when pentan 2 ohm is reduced. So pent 5 carbons, the ketone is on the second carbon, and so let's fill in our hydrogens. And it's reduced, so that means that we are either um, removing oxygens or adding hydrogens. So we're going to go ahead and change this into a secondary alcohol by adding hydrogen. In. Like that. So this is um, pentan 2 all. Explain how the following reduction reactions are carried out in the laboratory. So um, propanoic acid to propanol. Um, you can take the propanoic acid and um, change it to an aldehyde and then to the primary alcohol using something um, like a lithium aluminum hydride and heat um, to act as a reducing agent. Then ethanol is an aldehyde. You can also get that to the alcohol ethanol in the same way. Use lithium aluminum hydride and heat. Okay, so this question we want to if I figure out the molecular structure of the reduction products of the following. So if I were to reduce this, this is a ketone. It's going to reduce to a secondary alcohol. Like that. And this is our carboxylic acid. It's going to reduce all of the way down to a primary alcohol instead. And become that product there. Okay, so this one we can use um, oxidation states to show that the following molecules are given an increasing order of oxidation. You need to focus in on the carbon atoms because um, the hydrogens and oxygens are gonna stay the same for these compounds. This carbon is a negative four to balance out the positive four from the hydrogen. And the next one, the carbon is a plus two to balance out the four um, hydrogens and the one oxygen. In this next compound, the aldehyde here, the um, carbon is going to have an oxidation state of zero. In the um, carboxylic acid, 
that, that carbon is going to be a plus 2 oxidation state. And in carbon dioxide, it's a plus 4 oxidation state. So because the hydrogens and oxygens haven't, aren't changing in any of them, you can just focus on the carbons and list them in order from the most negative oxidation state to the most positive oxidation state. Okay, so then this also links forward um, if you haven't covered reactivity 3.4 yet, um, but some reactions of alkenes are classified as reduction reactions, like we talked about in this, like hydrogenation, where that double bond is being split and um, it's being, you know, you're adding the hydrogens in immediately. Others are classified as electrophilic addition reactions. And these ones tend to be multiple steps. So something is going to break the um, double bond and then something else needs to be attracted to the extra electrons. Um, an electrophile needs to be attracted to the pi bond electrons that are present in that um, C double bond C. Uh, this, there's extra electrons there that something that is an electrophile can come in and attract.